good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever we are in the part of the world. <laughs> My name is Elom, and I work in the in Ghana. I'm here in Ghana, the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. I lead the quality improvement work here. I am a fellow with the ISQA. Um, other backgrounds are uh, in public health and organization development. Um, I do so many things. Um, currently fortunate to be one of the, to be a national consultant for uh, UNICEF, going to help with their mother baby friendly health facility initiative, using, helping to reduce uh, neonatal mortality using, under, uh, using quality improvement uh, methodologies and approaches. So briefly, uh, that is ab about, about me and the work I, I do in Ghana. I have worked in the hospital. My hospital is the largest in, in Ghana and the third largest in West Africa, the largest in West Africa and the third largest in Africa. Uh, fortunately, last week I had the opportunity to visit the largest in South Africa and it was very awesome. Um, so I think I can start the presentation right away. Okay. So this webinar is titled Partnerships for MNCH, uh, Maternal, Newborn and Child Health uh, Implementation in a West African Country. So the West African country here is Ghana. Uh, this is going to be the outline for the presentation. I will take you quickly to look at how healthcare is organized in Ghana and then a few country statistics on maternal, newborn and child health initiatives. And then we'll also look at some partnerships in MNCH, in the MNCH space in Ghana. And then some implementation approaches uh, would share with you some successes as far as implementation is concerned and some weaknesses and the lessons learned and then some brief conclusions. So healthcare in Ghana, the, so for us, the Ministry of Health anchors or gives direction as far as the healthcare in Ghana in the country is concerned. With the Ministry of Health, the Ministry has 22 agencies that perform service delivery, regulation, financing, research and training functions uh, across the country. So the Ministry also has a primary responsibility for formulating policy, coordinating, ensuring coordination, and monitoring the implementation of policies, programs, and processes for the evaluation of the program of work in the country. So as far as the ministry is concerned, when you take the ministry, we have the service delivery agencies in the, in the country. And the service delivery agencies are mostly the Ghana Health Service and the teaching hospitals. So the Ghana Health Service is the largest as far as the service delivery agency in the ministry is concerned. And then we have the teaching hospitals. Then we also have the private or the, the the, the private and the quasi-governmental uh, institutions uh, in, the, in the country that are also responsible for service, for service delivery. So for some of the quasi, we call them the CHAG, the Christian Health Association in Ghana. There are institutions that pro provide healthcare services that are mostly the faith-based organization. For the teaching hospitals, we have the they provide tertiary and, and, and specialist services, uh, and they also act as the main referral facilities in the, in the country. I've mentioned the private uh, health institutions. Then we have the National Ambulance Service. So Ghana has a National Ambulance Service. We also have the National Blood Transfusion, National Blood Service, and then we also have the National Health Insurance Authority. So, so in Ghana, we have a health insurance uh, system. Uh, we are trying to also work towards achieving universal health coverage in the shortest possible time. So this is driven by the National Health Insurance Authority. So that's briefly about the service delivery organizations we have in the, in the country. So a brief of our country statistic, our uh, maternal mortality, as at end of year last year was 300 and as at um, 2015 was 319 per 100,000 live deaths. And it's also estimated that 2,800 mothers die each year in their effort to fulfill their biological responsibility. For neonatal mortality is 29 per 1,000 live deaths. So this is the, uh, the chart 
from 1990 up until 2015, our maternal mortality has decreased steadily from 634 to 319, as I mentioned. And then these are the numbers as far as the mortalities are concerned, from 3,600 uh, maternal deaths up right down to 2,800 as of 2015. Uh, I put here in 2016, uh, normally every two years, a survey is conducted together with the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, and all the partners to estimate the maternal mortality uh, for, the, for the country. And I am told by the ministry that the next one that is going to be done is going to be next year, 2018. But for institutional mortality, uh, I am told that the figure stands at 1,033 as at 2016, end of year 2016. But we, are, we cannot get the, the mortality ratio or the rate for 2016. That will be computed, God willing, next year when that uh, joint uh, stakeholder grouping is performed and then the survey is conducted so that we know what the, the true figures are as far as the rate for 2016 is concerned. When we look at uh, neonatal mortality and under five, these are also what, what the figures are. For under five from 1983 up until 2014, we also see that there is also a steady decline. And for 2010 to 2014, there is stands at uh, 60. And also for neonatal mortality, we are also seeing another steady decline also from uh, the 1980s up until 2014, where we are also recording at, at 20, at, we are also recording at 29. So gradually, all in all, we are seeing some steady decline as far as our uh, mortality indicators are concerned across the board for both neonates under five and then for our mothers. And the age, the age specific mortality we are seeing for neonates, we see that um, more than 50% of our neonates are dying under, uh, in less than 24 hours, uh, with the rest making it up until about seven, making it up until about seven days. So more than half of the mortalities, 60% of the mortalities among units is occurring in less than 24 hours. We can discuss some of the reasons that are accounting for uh, these deaths. For, the, for our maternal death, we are also seeing that these are some of the factors that are causing or contributing to the death. We are seeing delays uh, for our pregnant mothers in arriving at the facility we are seeing delays with respect to transfer to the appropriate level of care. And then the other delays are within the health facility, either due to lack of supplies, due to the absence or slowness of the health workers in the delivery of the care that is needed, or due to uh, the correct uh, diagnosis or the correct treatment. So these are a few factors that are contributing to the maternal deaths or the increase the maternal deaths we are seeing in, in Ghana. In Ghana, the, MNH, the MNCH space is flooded by these partners. We have the EU Danida. So recently what Ghana has is what we call the Millennium Accelerated uh, Framework, which is the MAF initiative. And for the MAF, we have the EU and the Danida that are contributing a pool of resources that is helping Ghana. At, when, when we were racing, towards the end of the MDG. Uh, the, this initiative was put together by the Ministry of Health so that a pool of donors could come together with their resources to help the country accelerate its attainment of the MDG four and five. So that is why we have the MAF and the pool is contributed by the EU and Danida. And then we also have the USAID Systems for Health. The USAID Systems for Health is currently in five regions of Ghana. Now, Ghana has 10 administrative regions. So the USAID Systems for Health are in five administrative regions of Ghana. We also have UNICEF. And UNICEF is also, I think, in, uh, is in the northern regions of, of Ghana. So UNICEF is helping. UNICEF's interest is in under five units. So they are working in the, in the northern regions of Ghana. 
And then we have the Institute of Healthcare Improvement and Eubora. They are also in parts of the uh, greater Accra region of Ghana and other parts of Ghana. But more specifically, IHI and Eubora also supported Ghana in developing the national in, Ghana, in developing the national quality strategy of Ghana. Uh, they, there are other areas that they are supporting the country in. And then we have JICA, we have Jipaigo, we have Koika from Korea, and then we have PATH, which are also in five regions of the country. So these are the partners as far as the MNCH space in Ghana is concerned. Now, the partnership development process in Ghana begins by the entry of partners. But at the ministry level, meetings with national, uh, the partners meet with the national uh, people at the ministry level to ensure that there is alignment of interest by the parties. So what happens is that at the ministry, the ministry has its program of work and its agenda. Uh, so if a partner comes and the partner's interest is in MNCH, discussions are uh, convened so that the partners are sent to appropriate parts of the country where they are support and the need is actually felt. So for instance, UNICEF is in the northern part of Ghana. The I, I mentioned IHI and Eubora, they are in some parts of Greater Accra. USAID is in five regions of, of the country, supporting with various aspects of the MNCH program in the country. So that is how the, so when they go to the regions, they meet with the regional directors of health and then they discuss further and then they ensure harmony and alignment as far as the interest of the, of the country and the party is, is concerned. But most importantly for us now in the country, it is driven heavily more by the interest of the country. So when you come and you are a partner, we look at our need and where our need is most felt and needed, you are directed appropriately to support in that particular uh, area. Unlike previously when partners were, were calling the shot and wanted uh, places where, I mean, results could be attained um, faster, uh, uh, etc. Now it is not the way, it is now done collaboratively so that, I mean, both country and partner attain their desired uh, goals and, and results. So when both parties are satisfied, MOUs are, are signed and then the deal uh, begins. So I've mentioned that there is joint planning and monitoring. There are various subcommittees on specific areas uh, that we have in the country. So after the, so that is how it is done. When the MOUs are signed on the field, the ministry or the Ghana Health Service, together with the partner, undertakes joint planning and monitoring as far as the implementation of the arrangement is concerned. As a, uh, as a sector or as a ministry, there are various subcommittees, such as in the areas of adolescent health, child health, newborn care, maternal health, so various subcommittees. So depending on the partner's interest, the partner is roped in into any of these subcommittees and then Periodically, implementation of the program is reviewed and assessed. Uh, as a country, there are also monthly and quarterly meetings. And in these monthly and quarterly meetings, all partners are involved. So if you are a partner, you are part of the monthly meetings as far as the ministry or the ministry's agency is, is concerned. And then the program is reviewed, in, uh, implementation is tracked. And as also a ministry or as a country, we also have what we call the annual health summit. And in this annual health summit, also partners are also invited. I mean, partners are a core part of the annual health summit. Are these, some of these MNH, MNCH uh, figures and statistics are brought to the fore. They are reviewed, implementation is tracked, evaluation is made, and then the whole system is appraised so that where there are shortfalls, they are filled in. Partners are also invited to the various annual performance reviews wherever they are. So for instance, if a partner is in a particular administrative region, that partner is invited to the annual performance review of that particular administrative region of health so that the partner sits in and it is part, he or she is part and they review 
the implementation and the track progress of whatever is being done. So as a country, now presently, the, the, our uh, health space is guided by our uh, national healthcare quality strategy. So this is what is guiding the, our implementation as far as quality, the provision of healthcare is concerned in, in Ghana. And fortunately, this, the development of this document um, inputs were sought from all the relevant partners in the country. So this is driving, and one of the, one of the key priority areas that this document is driving is maternal, uh, maternal, newborn, and child health. And it is very integral. And this document seeks, to, uh, seeks as a, for us as a country that we use quality improvement approaches and methodologies to ensure that we are able to attain our healthcare quality, our healthcare outcomes appropriately. The second uh, picture you see here is also one that UNICEF supported the country to develop. This is the mother-baby-friendly mother health facility initiative. And I think UNICEF is supporting three countries, three uh, developing countries to implement, to uh, uh, ensure the reduction of neonatal mortality, also using quality improvement methodologies and methodologies and approaches. So also as a country, we are testing, the impl uh, testing this implementation guide that have been developed by UNICEF in the north. We are testing, we are testing the implementation guide. The Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Service together with UNICEF are testing the implementation of, of, of this guide. Also as part of efforts to reduce neonatal mortality and invariably child mortality. So these are two key documents that is guiding the or driving the MNCH uh, space and the agenda in, in Ghana to ensure that we are able to improve upon our, our outcomes. So as far as the impact of partnerships, uh, of the various partnerships is concerned in the country, I mean, uh, it is phenomenal. Uh, so these are just a few that some of the impact has been in the area of equipment supply to facilities across, across the country. And then I have already mentioned that we have seen a 25% reduction in under five mortality at the national level from 2008 to 2014. As we speak, I can also say that there have been increased coverage as far as primary healthcare services is concerned. Uh, for instance, in Ghana, we have what we call the CHIPS uh, compound. These are the community health uh, primary services. They serve they are uh, almost in every community. We have 180 of the CHIPS compound in every community in, in Ghana presently. And USAID Systems for Health is also supporting with 50, building 50 uh, new of these CHIPS compounds across Across the, across the country or the regions where their presence is felt. So we are striving as a country to increase access uh, as far as healthcare is concerned. And these CHIPS compound or these primary healthcare facilities provide MNCH services as their core or their minimum. So they are able to do deliveries and do very basic things. So before they refer, uh, whenever it becomes necessary for them to refer. I have already talked about infrastructural um, support. And another thing that we are doing is also, uh, this is also being done by the Ghana Health Service in partnership with another um, agency or partner, looking at how they are able to use mobile phones to improve access uh, to uh, maternal uh, services. So that is another one that is being done. Another impact has been, I've talked about the, the I've talked about the access uh, issues uh, already. So also another impact is also in the area of capacity, capacity building. And this picture you are seeing on your left is one of the capacity building uh, sessions that um, 
the IHI and Ebora supported as far as building the so Ghana has what they call the National Healthcare Quality Strategy Steering Committee. And this is the membership of the steering committee. And they are drawn from all the agencies of the ministry. So uh, together with the community, some representatives from the community and the consumer group or the patient support group. So this is one, and this is the Honorable Deputy uh, Minister of Health, one of the Honorable Deputy Ministers of Health, who the team was very gracious and she uh, opened the training session uh, i think about two or three months about two or three months ago so this is the core team that the country puts together to ensure that they drive the quality agenda in the country so this it is not only in mnch but in all areas all the priority areas as far as the country is concerned this is another capacity building session and uh, a little bias because I am from the teaching hospital. Uh, we also get some support and this was one of the partnerships we had with the DFID. That DFID supported the teaching hospital last year and it was a capacity building session for the, the hospital also has a, a, a quality central committee. Uh, 50 of them together with their focal persons across 19 clinical uh, units and departments of that hospital. And they were receiving capacity building. The facilitators were from uh, uh, the US AIHQ, American Institute for Healthcare Quality. And these guys were certified at the end of the training. They wrote the institutional levels also there is some levels of partnership and some levels of relationship that happens but the larger partnership is organized by the ministry um, which is the umbrella as far as the healthcare uh, is, is concerned in the country i have mentioned some of the declines already but these are some other declines as far as facility as far as facility deliveries are concerned, we have witnessed an increase from 42% to 73%. And then also we have also seen that the percentage of beds attended to by skilled delivery has also increased from 40% to 70%. This is one picture I took in one of the facilities I visited. Uh, we are looking at ensuring that immediately babies are delivered, they are, the, the temperature is kept warm, uh, babies are kept warm, so skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact. And we were looking at how many facilities were doing the skin-to-skin -skin contact. And I chanced over this in one of the facilities. So these are, and the figures uh, keep uh, increasing. Uh, we are, personally, I'm yet to find out how this is impacting on, on, on outcomes, but I believe at the end of the year, we will get an aggregated data as to how we are faring in all of this. Some of the lessons that have been learned over the period include this, that there is a weak accountability and, and coordination framework. We also see that there is an effective country framework that enhances the partnership relationship and ensures alignment and synergy of all the parties in the partnership. And then a, another lesson is that is that of the continuous supportive supervision of the various uh, facilities. The Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service and its agencies have a very rigorous supportive supervision uh, system that is done either monthly and routinely to ensure that whatever plans that are written out are actually what is being implemented. And then we also see provision of requisite and basic minimum inputs is very key I mean, if you want a reduction in mortality, you cannot have reduction in mortality when the basic inputs are absent. So we have seen that where the supplies have been made, it has contributed significantly to the reduction as far as the mortalities are concerned. And we also learned that sustainability plan is very necessary to ensure that the gains are upheld. And discussions in the ministry uh, it's all about sustainability and how to ensure that the gains are not, we do not retrogress whenever the donors uh, or whenever the partners go uh, or whenever the period of partnership 
is ended. And we have also learned that effective leadership across all the levels of the healthcare delivery system is very key. I mean, when you visit a region and you speak to the regional health directorate, it is as if you are speaking with the Minister of Health or the Director General. They are well able and then they are equally carrying out the mandate at their respective regions and the various, uh, the various districts and even at the facility at the facility level. My own hospital is, 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 a, classical, um, is a classical example. So these are some of the key lessons that, that, have been, that have been learned as far as the journey in, in Ghana is, is concerned. So I would want to pause here and then acknowledge these people because um, I work in a facility, not in the country, but I have um, worked in the Ministry of Health before, done my internship at the ministry as a PhD intern, and then the Ghana Health Service. So preparing these slides, I have had to speak with the people at the, who work at the Ministry of Health routinely and the Ghana Health Service. So I would have to acknowledge the, the director for the Family Health Division of the Ghana Health Service and the director also for the Greater Accra Regional Health Directorate, Dr. Linda uh, Van Otu. I also have to acknowledge Soji Soji uh, Tete. He is the executive director for the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in the African region. And also acknowledge Benjamin Nyakuche, uh, the head of the policy analysis uh, unit. In fact, I worked directly under him when I was a PhD intern at the Ministry of Health. And then also acknowledge uh, Dr. Philip Amu, who is the head of the public health unit at the Kolebuti Chin Hospital, where, where I work. So uh, without the support of these people, I couldn't have prepared, uh, I couldn't have prepared the slides. So thank you very much, and thank you very much to to, to these people. If there are any uh, questions and uh, concerns, I believe uh, we can clarify. We can clarify them. So thank you. Well, thanks very much, Elam, for a really great overview. And uh, it's, it's really quite impressive to see the way in which the national program in Ghana has taken charge of the maternal and infant mortality um, uh, concerns in, in, in the country. And also, I think uh, the way in which you have seized control of all of the donors, I think we know that one of the uh, challenges in many countries is the lack of coordination of donors. And I think it's great to see this all coming together under a national quality and policy strategy. Um, although I have a bunch of questions, I think it would be great if we open up first to the group for questions. And I think we can, you can stop the screen sharing at this point. Um, okay. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Right. So let me open up the floor for questions. Um, I think we only have three attendees left. Emmanuel dropped off. Yeah, Maureen, go ahead, please. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Hey, th thank you so much, um, Elon, for that presentation. That was uh, very good and encouraging. Um, Kenya is identifying with most of your data. Um, but you seem to be doing very well on maternal mortality and also child mortality. And so it's very impressive to see the steps you've taken to ensure that, um, that you are improving by day. My uh, one question on, on, uh, on chips, um, you said the community, I, I related to a community strategy in Kenya where you have community health workers who are supporting um, MNCH initiative, if I'm not wrong. Um, we have been struggling with ensuring um, coordination in the community strategy. And so I, I, I think you're better placed even at facility level to, to share your experience. How have you been able to um, you know, monitor coordination of uh, community health workers to ensure that you're getting either data or you know, support and information on, from the community? And two, how have you been able to um, work out uh, remuneration and just making them motivated to keep going. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for, for those questions. One, on the, I mentioned that 
there is a very robust um, supportive supervision system, especially in the Ghana Health Service. So within the Ghana Health Service, you have the Director General who sits in Accra. And then at every region, there are regional health directors. When you go to the districts, there are district health direct directors. So, and then we also have a very robust public health system. So the public health system and the clinical team work together. Now, at the very low, which is the CHIPS compound, some of the CHIPS compound, as I speak today, are even manned by clinical nurses and not necessarily public health nurses anymore. So what happens is that at the district level, the power is devolved from the director general to the district health director. And then, so there is the district health management team at the very low level in the district. And this district health management team oversee all the health facilities even including the private health facilities. So data reporting is done to the district. Now, Ghana, what Ghana has also is what we call the, the district health information management system. That collates data every month, irrespective of the facility, data is inputted through the district health information management team. So if you are in district A, community A, you're, you send, you route your data. If you don't have technology, it is collected manually, and then you bring it to the district office, and then it is imputed. So that is what there is a very robust um, mechanism as far as supervision and monitoring is concerned, right down to the district level. So periodically, a team moves from the national level, if it is the national health service, moves from the national level and visits the district, right, to the region and then the district. A team equally moves also periodically from the national level, from the ministry, and also visits the district also periodically through the region. So that is how our system here is organized. You know, for the teaching hospitals, you don't have any jurisdiction as far as visiting the any facility within the Ghana Health Service is concerned, except you are invited based on your level of expertise or something. So for instance, I am periodically invited when it has to do with quality improvement that I support either the, I support the Ghana Health Service to visit some of the facilities when it has to do with quality improvement. I know some of my other colleagues also support, especially when it comes to infection prevention and control and other specialties where the Ghana Health Service feels that it would be, uh, it would require some add-ons uh, which are not necessarily available within its pool. So that is how uh, the monitoring and evaluation is organized here, is organized here in Ghana. I mean, it is not regular. Sometimes there are concerns with respect to logistics and transportation, et cetera. But any time that it is done, it is very holistic and very, uh, very comprehensive. As far as remuneration is, is concerned, I think that no health worker can ever be adequately remunerated. <laughs> uh, as, 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 a sector, as a sector, we still have our own challenges when it comes to remuneration. And the ministry and the government continuously are working on ensuring that remuneration is enhanced. So I will not say that remuneration is okay or very perfect, but at least it is at a level that um, health workers would be very excited whenever it is enhanced. I mean, I, I traveled recently, I was in South Africa just over the weekend, and I was surprised that health workers in South Africa we're also calling for enhancement as far as remuneration is concerned. I visited some of the plushes facilities. I was in Imperial College and speaking to colleagues in Imperial College, they also wanted their remuneration enhanced. So, I mean, I am making this uh, to tell you that, I mean, I believe that as far as remuneration is concerned, 
health workers will never be satisfied. Um, but I mean, it is at a level where the government itself realizes that it would have to do something about it. Thank you. Um, we'll have Maureen, you want to follow up on that? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, sorry, so very briefly. So um, thanks, thanks for, for the response. Um, the remuneration was in relation to community health workers who um, in Kenya, you know, uh, link the community to the facility. And so we've always had a challenge to have a package for that. And we can as well follow this with an email and just um, discuss more um, if time doesn't allow. Thank you. Great, thanks. So, I mean, I didn't want to, I, I, yeah, I, I didn't want to exclude the community health workers. But I mean, um, okay, so what that, that response was for the health sector in general, but specifically on the community health workers. Um, in some instances, the districts provide accommodation to ensure that their transportation to the facility, I mean, is a bit, um, they do not spend on uh, transportation. Sometimes the ministry provides motorbikes uh, to facilitate their movement at the community, at the community level. So these are a few things. And sometimes also, except that a visit is very necessary, sometimes uh, the district also provide them with mobile phones so that they, they get the access their clients uh, through phones so that they may not necessarily, they would have to journey only when it is necessary. So these are a few um, extrinsic motiva motivators that the, the ministry uh, has in, in place uh, for them. Well, once a while there are tips, uh, there are uh, some donations and gifts that are given uh, but these are very rare and not uh, very often. So aside the transport and these other external motivation factors, I mean, direct cash is often very rare, probably except at the end of the year where a district is organizing an end of year uh, appreciation or something for its healthcare workers. Then some of these direct cash incentives uh, direct cash, cash incentives come in, but otherwise these are other forms of remuneration that that is available for the community health workers. Okay, thanks. Um, other questions at the moment? I've got a couple. If nobody else does, so Alan, let me let me ask you. Um, uh, first of all, what what is the contribution, uh, or do you think the contribution? of HIV was to maternal mortality and infant mortality. I know Ghana is not as high prevalence as Kenya, for example, but um, some of the spikes um, and then subsequent declines we know were in many countries were related to a PMTCT and the success of rollout of option B plus. That's one question. Um, and then the other question um, I've got of the two that I want to ask uh, first, and then I'll turn it back over um, is about the, um, about the process for monitoring process measures as you go forward um, in terms of uh, you know how you how you monitor um, the the different process measures related to maternal and infant care on a regular basis in the facilities uh, as you're tracking the outcomes uh, over time. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Um, question. One, on the HIV contribution, I would want to validate and get back and get back to you. But in, in Ghana, it is not as um, heavy as other countries, especially as in South Africa and other, and, and other countries. So you will see that the contributory factors that I popped up, HIV was even not uh, in the list. And as far as direct uh, as far as the causes of maternal mortality is concerned in Ghana is primarily hemorrhage, hemorrh hemorrhage conditions and then eclampsia, eclampsia, preeclampsia, hypertensive conditions. So these are the highest. So HIV, HIV may be among the top 10. I would have to check and then get back to you. But as far as one and two is concerned is hemorrhage and eclampsia. 
so maybe uh, uh, for one year, hemorrhage will be tops, another year, eclampsia, and uh, like that. So that is, so HIV may be one of top 10, but I'll, 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 I'll cross check and then I'll share, I'll share that, that fact with, with, with the audience. Okay, great. On, and then process measures. Yeah, go ahead. And then after yeah, that, so Emmanuel on, has his hand up for a question. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So on process measures, I mean, the quality strategy that I popped up is inundated with process measures. We have our process measures. We have our outcome measures that we are interested in tracking. Fortunately, health facilities, uh, most health facilities in the country are tracking these measures already. So for instance, typically in my facility in the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, we are tracking the waiting uh, time internally as far as uh, attending to our pregnant women and even uh, children is concerned. So the hospital has what it calls the a triaging system for both obstetrics and then uh, children. And this triaging system is available in most of the Ghana Health Service facilities. For instance, for children and obstetrics, uh, you go to our regional, one of our regional hospitals in Greater Accra, which is the rich regional hospital. It is doing obstetrics triaging and tracking a number of these process measures that are contained in the in the in the quality strategy. I, I maybe as we go on, I will pull up and then throw up a few a few of them. So, but otherwise, if any viewer or listener is interested in the details of our measures, when you download our quality strategy, everything you will need as far as what Ghana is tracking is concerned in, not even only in MNCH, is contained in that document. You can also refer to the Mother Baby Friendly Health Facility Initiative, the implementation guide that I also popped up. And all the measures are also contained uh, in those two documents that is guiding our, our MNCH uh, as, as a country for now. So everything is stuck up in there. Great, thanks very much, appreciate that. Emmanuel, I, I, I now see you have your hand up. Go ahead, thanks. Hello, thank you so very much for an amazing presentation. Um, you know we're brothers by geography, so I would want to ask how you've managed um, when it comes to the implementation of the um, strategy. So for Nigeria, we have so many beautifully written strategies, but we always get into trouble when it comes to execution and implementation. Size hasn't really counted positively for us in, in that regard. What are the one, two things you would want to share with Nigeria as regards um, implementation of your, your strategy. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, with the strategy, I will take it as the quality strategy. Is that what you are referring to? Yes, please, yes. Okay, okay. I mean, uh, the, the journey has not been um, so smooth also for us as a country. But I think one thing that has worked is the will. I mean, such that where there is, the, there has been the, the political will. I mean, right at the ministry level, we have a change of government, but the current government is equally very passionate and willing as far as issues of quality healthcare is concerned. At the ministry, we have a very dynamic chief director and a director for policy planning, a, a, a PPME. Uh, Dr. Odami and Dr. Afisa Zakaria. I mean, these two have been very inspirational and they have, now they are also around and they are guiding, they are guiding the, the process. Personally, as I... I person. I think it is a bit slow. We are better off being slow and missing the, missing the target. So it's been the political will. Right from the, it has been very phenomenal. I mean, the former uh, Minister of Health was such an amazing uh, gentleman who understood the sector, was very passionate about issues of 
healthcare quality and patient safety, and then maternal and newborn child health. Uh, fortunately, his uh, successor, which is the current uh, minister, they are equally very determined and very passionate as far as issues of quality healthcare is concerned. So if you ask me, I think that is, I think that is what has worked, such that irrespective of the political era in the history of the ministry, still whoever is there deems it, see, sees it necessary to ensure that the process continues. The others that have worked at leadership at the facility level, because I mean, in my own facility, one of the heads of department, one of the days I sat in a mortality meeting and it was a maternal mortality meeting and they were discussing the death of a pregnant woman. And then I raised my hand up to make a point. And this uh, professor, uh, he is now going to be with the Lord. The, uh, he was the head of department for the obstetrics department. He told me, young man, no doctor picks up his stethoscope from the house, comes to the hospital to come and kill mothers. I mean, that was very phenomenal and that was very telling. Uh, such that even at the facility level, frontline healthcare workers are very mindful of their duties and their responsibilities when it comes to delivering quality and safe care. So uh, these are a few things that is working, that, that is working for us for us as, as a country. Thanks, Elon. Um, I think I would, uh, it's almost uh, at the top of the hour and I wanna kick it over to Peter in case he has any comments to make. Uh, just also point out that one of the other, a couple of things that also really struck me was this very robust system of monitoring that goes through the district level um, and how the reporting goes through, even for the private sector, which I think is something that in most countries doesn't happen. It's always the big question, what about the private sector? So. Um, you know, it's another topic of conversation in terms of, I think, the process by which you were able to achieve the buy-in from the private sector and marshal them into the process. On issues of capacity, what happens often with the ministry, uh, be some of the things that I have been a part of, is that whenever there are international consultants, for instance, they try to ensure that the international consultants work with a core group in the country so that whenever the international consultant goes there is capacity that is left yeah. behind in country yeah. so i mean we are not deprived with or without an international consultant the process still goes on so that is one thing that the country does which is very um which is very phenomenal in terms of capacity so um i think uh, I mentioned that there is weakness with respect to accountability, but in some areas it is equally strong because some of the regional health directors, it is a no-no as far as maternal mortality is concerned, that whenever it happens, I mean, the facility will have to explain. And there are maternal mortality conferences and neonatal and child health conferences that occurs at every facility in the country. I mean, it could be improved, but these are a few of some of the accountability systems that are, that are in place that is ensuring, ensuring the decline. I, I can share the, the other details as, as you have requested. Yeah, okay, thanks very much. And uh, so I really think the standard of learning is going to be very good. And I've just seen, Bruce, I've seen your, your, your little your message and we can go through through and help you with the key learnings, but um, it's how we can get all this learning together and spread it because the experience is is universal uh, on this one. Great. Okay, great. Everybody have a great rest of the day. Nice to see you all. And thanks again, everyone, nice for the terrific yeah. talk. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.